it was so hard working in this environment. There is a big difference between working in a high poverty school and working in a school that is, doesn't have high poverty. I was a principal at Park Elementary, which is about three miles away from here for seven years, loved it. And um, the superintendent at the time, David Sawyer, picked me up and put me here. And I cried and cried and I did not want to go. It was an old building, it was run down. We only had 175 kids. And they said, well, we've got bond money to build a new school, but we can't build a new school for 175 kids. So we expect you to build up the population. I had no idea how to do that, but um, we did. And um, you know, after one year of just being kind to people and welcoming in parents, we ended up at about 350. And by the time I left here, there were 500 kids. I would work every day. I would be here at 6.30. Uh, one day a week, I wouldn't leave here till 10, just to, because all the people and all of their, I was in crisis mode, mainly, uh, most of the time, because there were crises. You know, for instance, we would go to lockdown a couple times a month here because of danger in the neighborhood. But the danger never came onto our property, which was nice. Uh, my first three weeks, we had a fight, two or three fights every day. And it wasn't just small fights, I mean, blood slightly, blood slying. Um, it was scary. The bus system in Tulsa, it would take them five hours to get to a, to get to a Walmart on the bus. Five hours. You wouldn't do that because you have a car. I have a car. And, but they had to do it. That was the only place they could go. I told Clark Millspaw, and unbeknownst to me who he is, but I certainly think God knew who he was. Um, I said, we need a grocery store. I told him the story. He had big tears in his eyes. There was a little girl that was um, curled up on a on a beanbag chair in my office, and she's four, she's asleep. And he said, what's her story? And I said, well, let me show you. So we're waiting for police to come get her right now. I pulled up her, her legs, her uh, jean pant legs, and there were burn marks on, on her leg where her mama's Johns had put cigarettes out on her legs. She had hit her teacher, bit her teacher, hit me, scratched me at four because nobody was caring for her. She didn't have any trust for anybody. So I'm telling him that, and he's crying and I'm crying. He goes, can I pray with you? I said, sure, let's pray. So we prayed over her, we prayed over this building, and um, he got in his car, it was a January morning uh, in 2007, I think, and he drove around and he found two steel buildings next to the school, and he purchased them. He formed his own nonprofit called The Harvest, it has its own grocery store run by the community now, and they get their, their food, they get it from Aldi, and then they sell it for a couple pennies more so they can pay for the lights and everything. And it's run by people in the community, and so they can get milk and much cheaper than they get at Walmart. In 2005, we moved over to the new building, and uh, it's kind of a state-of-the-art type of a building and the neighborhood is really proud of it. But it's a dangerous neighborhood in Tulsa. Um, it, it was a dangerous neighborhood. It now is a community school neighborhood. But there are three housing projects that feed in, and at times you'll hear about shootings on the west side. It's usually in this area. And yet school is a safe place. School is always a place these children can come and feel safe and loved and educated. It's really a good place for them. Parents in poverty love their children they don't do the job that middle school or middle class uh, parents or upper class parents do because they don't know how to do it any differently, but they continue to be doing the best job they know how to do. Um, sometimes that's a life of drugs too. Um, that's the only way that they have ever been able to function. So, you know, a lot of what I did uh, back in 2003 to 2012 was to teach parents how to parent and to teach children that it's not okay to say inappropriate words, it's not okay to hit people just because you want to, um, teach them different ways of behavior. So it really became people that came, they come, came all over the nation to tour Eugene Field and they would literally walk through and say, is this a private school? Well, not hardly. Uh, the parents walk in, the, the children walk in. And there are no buses that run here. They all walk from the neighborhood in. And um, it's really a really good place for children to be educated. 
We brought in a lot of community support. Um, all the area churches not only have prayed for us, but also have, um, have donated funds. I was at the principal of the year in 2008 and 2010 because our test scores skyrocketed. We were that first year one of the worst. We were the worst uh, test scores in Tulsa Public and uh, one of the worst in the state of Oklahoma. And yet, when you get good teachers and you get a kind, caring staff and you pull in all these different community resources, your test scores start climbing. And, and climb they did. As the kids move through the different classes, they move through the different gardens. So one is a salsa garden, one is a berry garden, one is a, a garden that is indigenous to the state of Oklahoma. So they have different themes and the kids really understand now because it's been there since 2007, it's almost been there 10 years. Um, they understand that you can grow healthy food in the ground and it's sustainable and it's so much better for you. So nutrition's being taught, it, it's pretty amazing. Uh, with that garden has, has come raised test scores. The minute that garden went in, 100% of my third, fourth, and fifth graders scored 100% on, um, on their science test. So it really did equate into science scores. And uh, it, it's pretty amazing. And it was hands-on learning. You weren't learning about a cucumber in a book. You were actually growing one. And a lot of gardens around the country, uh, including in Salem Springs, uh, the garden, have come and, and seen this garden and seen what was possible. Uh, we're sitting in a, an art garden. And you know, if you look down, the, the bricks are from the old building. And so I have lots of great memories. Um, when people have ideas for things, I had a great art teacher named Matt Moffat, and he's a, he's a famous local artist. He also has a nonprofit, a girls' art school that he runs, and he's fabulous. And he had this idea, and I'm like, sure, let's do it. Um, the, you know, we're looking at some, some uh, mobile trailers that we brought in because the population was so high. And I thought it was a great idea to paint them brown to match the, uh, it's kind of a reddish brown, we actually picked out the paint, and some Boy Scouts did the painting for us, it was an Eagle Scout project. So they painted, and we, we even put blue on the roof, and I got in lots of trouble from Tulsa Public Schools from that, and uh, you know, I always thought rather ask forgiveness than permission. So uh, they yelled at me about that, and then they started, I, you know, I brought the superintendent out and I said, look at how great this looks. It, it doesn't look like they're outbuildings, it just looks like part of the building. So now in Tulsa Public, when they put a mobile building in, they always paint it to match the school, which I laugh when I drive by one and say, that's a contribution, right? And so by now things are rolling and um, things are, are going just kind of viral uh, in, in all of the nation. They get to know who we are and what we're doing and how we're doing it. Uh, it's about the time I think I need to start writing a book. All things working together, just like this tapestry, I think God looks down and sees this beautiful tapestry uh, at, at uh, Eugene Field Elementary in Tulsa Public Schools. There are names on the sidewalks from all the children that started in 2005, including my own. That's always going to be there. So I can still walk the neighborhood and they know who I am and I love that. Get involved with the kids in your, not only in your neighborhood, but beside your neighborhood. Yes, there are people around the world that are starving and there are mission fields around the world, but there's a mission field in your backyard. I'm, I was glad of my experience here. It taught me a lot. Uh, you think you know until you're in it. Uh, I had no idea that we could make this kind of difference, but to dig in and do it. And uh, faith was my key and I was on my knees praying for this place, always. And I've done the same thing in my, uh, my new school. I've been on my knees in the office praying for it and here comes help. So, you know, God's got his hand on all of us if we just ask.